What exactly is chaos? A somewhat nebulous term, it has appeared in various cultures throughout history. In the book of Genesis, chaos is the primordial state before God's act of creation. In the Eastern philosophical tradition known as Taoism, chaos is something featureless yet complete, born before heaven and earth. Despite the term's rich history and deep connection to philosophy and religion, mathematicians have invented their own notion of chaos. And unsurprisingly, it is incredibly rigorous and precise. Here, we will learn about the origins of this precise notion of chaos, what its definition means, and just what types of interesting systems it applies to. You may have heard of the butterfly effect. The idea that a butterfly flapping its wings in one part of the world could set off a chain of causes that ultimately leads to a tornado or a hurricane in an entirely different part of the world. The earliest mathematician or physicist to seriously consider what we now refer to as the butterfly effect was James Clark Maxwell. In addition to formulating his famous equations that govern the behavior of electricity and magnetism, Maxwell also wrote many works on the relationship between science, math, and philosophy. In particular, during an essay debate on determinism versus free will, Maxwell stated, when the state of things is such that an infinitely small variation of the present state will alter only by an infinitely small quantity the state at some future time, the condition of the system is said to be stable. But when an infinitely small variation in the present state may bring about a finite difference in the state of the system in a finite time, the condition of the system is said to be unstable. It is precisely these unstable systems that would later be studied in further detail by Henri Poincaré and form the basis of the butterfly effect, an essential feature of the mathematical theory of chaos. Intuitively, the butterfly effect tells us that a small change at one point in time can significantly alter the events that occur at a later point in time. Or, when applied to a specific physical system, the long-term behavior of the system is incredibly sensitive to the initial conditions. Although essential, this feature turns out to not really be fundamental to the precise mathematical notion of chaos. I'll explain what I mean by this in just a moment. The precise definition was formulated in 1989 by an American mathematician named Robert Devaney. He defined a system as being chaotic if it satisfied the following three criteria. The system was sensitive to initial conditions, it was topologically transitive, and its periodic orbits formed a dense set. A few years later, in 1992, a group of Australian mathematicians proved that sensitivity to initial conditions was automatically satisfied if the other two were. So the only two fundamental notions that characterize a chaotic system are that it's topologically transitive and that its periodic orbits form a dense set. So what exactly do these two criteria mean? We say that a function is topologically transitive if for any two neighborhoods you select, you can always find at least one point in one neighborhood and some integer k such that if you apply the function k times to the point, you will eventually end up inside of the other neighborhood. And this occurs no matter how small or large each neighborhood is. So an example of a function that is not topologically transitive is the map that rotates a point on the circle by an angle that is a rational number. Eventually, you will keep repeating the cycle and there are clearly many regions of the circle that you would never hit. However, if you consider the map that rotates a point by some angle that's an irrational number, suddenly you don't get the same periodicity. In fact, if you wait long enough, you would end up in any neighborhood you selected no matter how small. So the map that rotates a point on the circle by an irrational angle is topologically transitive. How about the second criterion? What does it mean for periodic orbits to form a dense set? This means that for any point X you select in your space, if you pick any distance greater than zero, no matter how small the distance is, you can always find some periodic orbit. So an orbit that repeats itself that is within that distance from X. A crucial consequence of this is that even though most of the points in a given space will not be part of a periodic orbit, there is no way to practically distinguish between points that are on a periodic orbit and points that are not. They are all arbitrarily close to one another. So even if you think you're at a stable point that is on a periodic orbit, 
any small deviation away from stability would lead to drastically different consequences in the evolution of the system. It's not that chaotic systems are only sensitive to initial conditions. The entire evolution of the system is sensitive. So if at any point in time a butterfly flaps its wings, this small motion could lead to drastic consequences later on. Okay, so that's the precise mathematical definition of chaos. And although it may seem rigorous and abstract, it turns out that there are examples of chaotic systems everywhere. One of the most famous is the Lorenz Attractor. It was first studied by the mathematician and meteorologist Edward Lorenz as he was attempting to model atmospheric convection. What he discovered were three ordinary differential equations that have various chaotic solutions. Specifically for these three parameters, the model satisfies the two criteria for being chaotic that we just learned about. And although this looks like just one curve, here I'm in fact showing five different curves that began with slightly different initial conditions. And you can see that their paths diverge drastically as the system evolves. Another really cool example of a chaotic system is the bifurcation diagram of the logistic map, which is a map that can be used as a tool to model population growth. If you consider this simple equation where you select a specific value of r, then input an initial value of x sub n minus 1, and iterate this expression to repeatedly calculate x sub n, you find something incredibly interesting. For all r values up to around 3.57, there are specific values that the map converges to. But once you get past this point, the map becomes incredibly chaotic and will be extremely sensitive to any minor changes. A couple of examples that are a bit more physical include turbulence and weather forecasting in general. Also the famous three-body problem, which is chaotic for most but not all initial conditions. And of course, I can't complete a video on chaos without showing the famous double pendulum. Here we have 15 double pendulums with a very minor difference in initial conditions chaos seems to emerge out of nowhere. 